Good evening, hello and welcome. You're with the news today, your primetime destination news, newsmakers, talking points. The big talking point tonight, can Arvind Kejriwal, the Chief Minister of Delhi, really run a government from jail? Among my other guests tonight will be Saurabh Bhardwaj, the Aam Admi Party's minister. We'll have plenty more on the show today. Also, our newsmaker Sonam Wangchuk has just ended a 21-day long climate fast in Ladakh. We'll have more on that story too on the news today. But the story breaking at this moment, all 22 crew members on a Singapore ship that crashed into a bridge in Baltimore are Indians, according to the Singapore-based shipping firm. The company Grace Ocean Private Limited in a statement said that all crew members are safe. A state of emergency has been declared in Baltimore. Over 20 people are still missing after the Baltimore bridge collapsed when the ship hit it late last night, early morning today. Those are the images that we are getting you from Baltimore when that ship collapse took place. When the bridge collapse took place after the ship hit it, 22 crew members, all Indians, all reported safe is the big story that we are getting at the top of the news today. Joining me now is Rohit Sharma from Washington with the very latest details. Rohit, can you give us more details? It's daybreak now. Are the rescue operations still on? We are told at least 20 people are missing. Hi, hey, Rajiv. Thanks for having me. Yes, exactly. So close to 20 people are, you know, are feared to be in the water. I mean, there are about seven cars that have fell, fallen into the river. Uh, the police have ruled out terrorism. And you know, as you said, all the 22 members are Indians. And I, we're trying to get some more information on that for now. But as a matter of fact, you know, and while we, you know, we were talking about this, it seems like there was a warning given by the crew members before the collapse of the bridge, before the ship hit the bridge. So there was a warning that was sent out. The power on the ship also went down before it hit. So they're trying to understand what could be a possible reason. It's too early to say. But we know for a fact that the, the crew members did try to signal warning before the, the ship hit the bridge. Okay, Rohit Sharma joining us with those details. Let's turn to that story then. A bridge collapse wherein all the Indian crew members are safe. What really happened? Take a look. A Singapore-flagged container ship rams the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. The bridge broke at several places and fell into the Patapsco River after the incident that took place during the early hours of Tuesday. The 948-foot-long dally operated by Singaporean company Synergy Group crashed into the 1.2-mile bridge at around 1.28 a.m. while leaving from Baltimore port to Sri Lanka. Several vehicles plunged into the river. More than 20 people are missing. Headlights of several vehicles could be seen on the bridge as huge spans collapsed into the river and the ship caught fire. A time-lapse video of the incident shows that the ship seems to be abruptly changing course and hitting the bridge. It is unclear why the ship changed course and whether it was due to a power blackout. There was no other maritime traffic incidentally. The Baltimore City Fire Department called the collapse a mass casualty incident. We're, we're bringing in the equipment specific to the operation right now and then even, even law enforcement agencies have a lot of the same marine ops equipment as we do. So given the incident is so big, we try to force multiply and just bring as many resources in as we can so that we can really blanket a large area for a search. All activity out of the Baltimore port, which caters to large container ships like the Dali, has been halted. Mystery looms as to what caused the crash. Bureau report, India Today. And we pray for the safety of all those in that terrible bridge collapse. Let's turn from there back home where our top story comes tonight from the national capital where Arvind Kejriwal finds himself in the eye of a gathering storm. The Delhi chief minister continues to run the Delhi government from enforcement directorate custody. Aam Admi Party claims Kejriwal today issued a second directive from the ED custody to the health department, ordering 
to ensure that there was no shortage of medicine in Delhi's government hospitals. The BJP claims these orders are illegal, unconstitutional and letters are being forged. The big question, can a chief minister run a government when he is in custody? That's our top focus. Take a look. Arvind Kejriwal is running the Delhi government from ED custody, claims the Amadmi party. The chief minister, who is being interrogated by the ED in liquor policy case, has issued a second order from lockup, this time directing the health department to ensure that there is no shortage of medicine in Mohalla clinics and government hospitals. CM Saab is बेहद व्यथित हैं कि दिल्ली के कई अस्पतालों में और मोहल्ला क्लिनिकों के अंदर दवाइयां उपलब्ध नहीं हैं तो उन्होंने मुझे आदेश दिया है कि इसके ऊपर जल्द से जल्द उचित कदम उठाए जाएं Earlier, Delhi Minister Atishi has displayed an order by the Chief Minister to ensure proper water supply during summer months. आज भी गिरफ्तार होने के बाद भी अरविंद केजरीवाल जी सिर्फ दिल्ली वालों के बारे में सोच रहे हैं दिल्ली वालों के कामों के बारे में सोच रहे हैं क्योंकि अरविंद केजरीवाल अपने आप को से दिल्ली का मुख्यमंत्री नहीं मानते हैं वो दिल्ली के दो करोड़ लोगों को अपना परिवार मानते हैं the BJP has launched a scathing attack on the Amani Party government, calling the orders passed by Kejriwal illegal and unconstitutional. उसके ऊपर मुकदमा दर्ज किया जाए आतिशी जी के ऊपर कार्रवाई की जाए आतिशी जी को ऐसी चिट्ठी इल्लीगल मुख्यमंत्री के दफ्तर को इस्तेमाल करके प्रोड्यूस करने में बर्खास्त किया जाए Sources in the ED tell India today that government files are barred inside ED headquarters during Kejriwal's custody ED sources say that the agency is not aware if the Delhi chief minister has passed any order via his lawyer the sources add that Kejriwal remains under CCTV surveillance and that signatures have not been obtained from him on any file. With Kejriwal likely to spend some time in ED custody, how long can he run the government from lockup? The bigger question is, does the law allow him to do that? Bureau Report, India Today. So can the Delhi government be run from custody by Arvind Kejriwal or will there have to be a change of guard in Delhi? Joining me now is senior Delhi minister of the Aam Party, Saurabh Bhardwaj. Saurabh, appreciate your joining us. That direct question. Can Mr. Kejriwal run this government from custody, ED custody at the moment? How is this government going to run? How are files going to be signed? How are cabinet meetings going to take place? What, why is this insistence that he must continue even if he's in custody? Radeep ji, I think before Mr. Kejriwal got arrested, we had meetings with our MLAs, our councillors, we had meetings in all 250 wards of Delhi, where we spoke to people and asked for their opinion. And I think more than 90% of the people overwhelmingly said that Mr. Arvind Kejriwal is the one for whom they voted for in Delhi. He is the one who got mandate for Delhi and he should be the one who should be the chief minister even if he is in the custody. And I think uh, I have been seeing a lot of comments by a lot mm -hmm. of constitutional experts, legal luminaries. I haven't seen anyone saying that there is any legal bar so from, there is no legal bar, Mr. Mr. Bhardwaj, but the practical issues and the moral Mr. issue. Mr. So Bhardwaj, there, no, there is no legal so is bar, no legal. but there is a practical yes. issue. So, How are so, you going to actually conduct cabinet meetings when the chief minister is in custody? And number two is the moral question. What's the message you are sending out? So, 
So I think uh, one thing is that when the chief ministers like Mr. Soren, Mr. Kejriwal are getting arrested and looking at the trend, it is quite probable that most of the chief ministers of opposition parties can get arrested by ED, CBI at the behest of the central government. You know, we cannot have a moral compass saying that now because you have been arrested, you have to resign then it's a very clear game for BJP. They'll arrest all of them and everybody will resign. So we cannot destabilize the governments of opposition parties only because they have been arrested by their political opponent. And it is very clear. So I don't think there is any issue of morality left here. The only issue is practicality. Yes, it is practically possible. We have given a lot of examples like Mr. Subroto Sahara. He was provided a, a full-fledged office with a computer, with everything, in jail. No, but do you really so want? No, no, but business. do you really want Arvind Kejriwal, who came into things. politics as a crusader against corruption, to be equated with a Subroto Rai Sahara? Even Hemant Soren, who you uh, mentioned just now, he resigned and handed over power to someone else. The question is. Why? So, what is the pressure to ensure that only Mr. Kejriwal? Is there a fear that of someone else taking over? What is the fear? No, 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 no. Look, Rajdeep, this is a trap. The BJP has laid a trap. This morality is also a trap. So this is a similar trap when in 2013, we had 28 seats out of 70 and we said that we cannot form the government. The trap was, no, why don't you form a government? Form a government with Congress. Form a government with Congress. And when we formed the government with the Congress, then it was like, oh, look, you are now with the Congress. You were always with the Congress. You are the B team of the Congress. So it's a trap. And BJP is master in laying such traps. But whenever there is such trap, I think Arvind Kejriwal is one politician in India who can see through their trap. Now the desperation of BJP is that they have contested three elections in Delhi against Mr. Kejriwal and every time people elect Arvind Kejriwal for being the CM. They don't want to see him the CM. No, but is it a trap? No, no, but Arvind is it a Kejriwal trap? Mr. Mr. Bhardwaj, sorry, CM. sorry to intervene. Is it a trap or is it the fact that the Aam Aadmi Party believes that there is no alternative to Mr. Kejriwal? So it is your own compulsion to keep Arvind Kejriwal no, no, because no. he's your only face. There is no other leader Not who can run Delhi. Is that what you're saying? So, so this is a very basic modus operandi how BJP operates. They will put such questions to you so that your answer should be convenient to BJP. Why should BJP decide whether Arvind Kejriwal will be the chief minister or not? Who is BJP to decide? Are they our friends? Is BJP my friend that they are giving me an advice that no, 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 it is not good. Arvind Kejriwal should not be the CM. There should be another CM. Why should I agree to BJP? BJP is my enemy. BJP is my political enemy. And all this narrative which is being spun around Amitpi party is the narrative of BJP. Why should I agree to BJP's thing? No, you may not agree. No, you I may not, not agree. You, you may not agree to the narrative, but what if tomorrow the Lieutenant Governor invokes his powers under Article 239A of the Constitution and says, I am Let's see. taking over the complete Let's administration see. of Delhi because Delhi cannot be run by a Chief Minister from custody. Then what happens? Rajdeep ji, the LG is not a friend of elected government of Delhi. If he wants to do anything, let him do. He is not doing, you know, any service to us. You are saying if the LG wants you know, to take over the government, he is free to do so? You are saying if the LG his... wants to take over the government, he is free to do so? Look, no, no, no. What I am saying is, if he wants to try his luck, he can do that. If it is legally possible, he can try his luck at it. People of Delhi will never forgive BJP and the LG for taking over the elected government of Delhi. He knows it. The LG knows it. The BJP knows it. But may, may I ask you, you said there are practical difficulties. How is the government running at the moment? How are decisions being taken? How are these orders coming from so, Mr. Kejriwal, who so, is in ED custody to you, to Atishi, to others. This has never happened in the history of this country. Sukram was the only yes. example and he was a minister in a so, government. This is the first so time Rajdeep a sitting Ji. chief minister is actually running the government from no, custody. I think, 
I think even in the case of Tamil Nadu, recently one of the ministers from Tamil Nadu was given uh, permission by the Honorable Court to be a minister and to run his department. He was given permission very recently. Sir, but a minister is not now, the same as a chief minister. Usually, Would you regard a chief minister? How know, is the chief minister practically going so, to run your government, so usually, take day-to-day -day meetings, cabinet yes, meetings, sign files? Yes. So your question, yes, yes. So, so the question is that for cabinet, for example, there have been a lot of occasions when we did not do the cabinet meeting per se, but we sent the cabinet file through circulation. So a file or a cabinet note can be prepared by the department, can be signed by the respected minister, and it goes to chief minister and he signs it, and it comes back. So there is no practical difficulty. Yes, if BJP wants to create a practical difficulty, there can be. But BJP is nobody to decide it. Whenever there is a difficulty, I am sure there will be provisions in the law to, you know, to ease out those difficulties. So, so may I ask you, you are saying this today, uh, which is four days after Mr. Kejriwal was taken into custody. Is this the stand that you are going to take even if, let's assume it's a prolonged custody, you are saying there is no question of reviewing this decision? Uh, Rajdeep, our party, our MLAs are very convinced that Mr. Kejriwal will be our Chief Minister. We don't see anybody capable than Mr. Kejriwal and I think he is the best Chief Minister we can ever imagine. The kind of, you know, supervision he keeps over different ministries, you know, it is unparalleled. And I think this mandate mm -hmm. is for Mr. Kejriwal. This mandate is for nobody else. It is for Mr. Kejriwal. People love him. The kind of sympathy I can mm -hmm. see across Delhi, across the party lines is unimaginable, Rajdeep ji. I never imagined that people yeah. will stop me while morning walk and say, we are with you. We are with you. You're, you're saying that there hope. is unprecedented. You're saying there is unprecedented doing, sympathy. You're saying there is unprecedented sympathy. You're saying there is no dent. Therefore, I... to ARP's claim to be anti-corruption. Your entire plank was anti-corruption. The BJP now says, how can the ARP talk any more of anti-corruption when a chief minister has been arrested in a scam? So, yes. So, had it been an India without knowledge of the electoral bonds, yes, there could have been a dent on us because we did not have certain answers. But today, when the electoral bond trail is out in open on the orders of the Honorable Supreme Court, we have evidence, we have proof that the star evidence or the star witness against Mr. K. J. Rival, because of which he has been arrested, is basically the person who has given 60 crores to BJP through electoral bonds. So here is a person named Mr. Sharad Chandra Reddy. His family owns Aurobindo Pharma. So consider, consider a rich, so consider a rich man's son who has 25,000 crore company. He is there in jail for six months and there is a constant force which is being used against him, a constant pressure on him, which he has said in the court that you have to toe the line. You have to say what ED wants you to say. And after being in the jail for six months, this guy breaks down and he says, yes, whatever ED is saying is right. And then he gets a bail because he has a back pain. Can you imagine somebody getting even one day leave for a back pain? Here the ED gave him bail in a money laundering case under PMLA for a back pain and as soon as he comes out of the jail he becomes a government approver he is a Sarkari Gawa and then his company donates 55 crore rupees to BJP can you imagine a money laundering accused person donating 55 crore rupees to BJP and BJP accepting it it's not that somebody just okay. left a check at their doorstep and they just took it no so, so you, they use these, that are, money. these are all these are so all is issues mr case. mr bardwaj these are all issues you will have to raise before the courts where mr kejriwal will have to seek bail these are all questions you will have to we raise will. before the people of delhi when you go to elections with them we will wait to see how the people of delhi respond to what you said 
But for now, for joining me and giving us the Ahmadmi Party position, I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's widen this. Can Arvind Kejriwal really run a government from jail? Is jail as chief minister's office practical or untenable? Is Mr. Kejriwal trying to play a sympathy card and will it work? Joining me now, Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate, Supreme Court. Jasmine Shah is AAP spokesperson and Shahzad Punawala is the BJP spokesperson. Appreciate all of you joining us. To you, Mr. Punawala, first. You heard possibly what Saurabh Bhardwaj says. He claimed the BJP is trying to trap AAP by saying the chief minister must resign. There is nothing in the law, according to Mr. Bhardwaj, that the chief minister has to resign. Your response. Uh, Rajiv, thank you for having me on the panel. And since the panel has Ahmadmi Party, it has Sanjay Hegres, whose disposition is well known, and me, and you have also given Saurabh Bharadwaj ample time. Please let me make my opening statement, which is predicated on three elements moral argument, obvious argument, and legal argument. I will answer all the questions and then you can interrupt or you can ask me the next question. First, on the moral point, which will answer Saurabh's question. Was Saurabh Bharadwaj in his earlier avatar as India against corruption trying to trap Lalu, Mulayam, Sonia, Rahul when they used to demand the resignations at drop of a hat? When they used to be in their earlier avatar under Anna Hazare, now obviously they've changed and they've gone to Lalu's side. At that time they used to say, ki pehle istifa fir janch. And in today's case, they say no istifa, no janch, nine summons may come. Court is not giving us remand on the basis of evidence, Supreme Court, High Court, Lower Court at all. Even then we will say we are Qatar Imandar and we will run our Sarkar from jail, just like Pablo Escobar of Delhi, that they want to run their operations from jail. Now let me come to the more obvious argument and then go to the legal argument. The obvious argument is that if this was such a tenable system, why did you take resignation of Mani Sisodia and Satyendra Jain? If this is such a tenable system, are you saying that a Padalikha party with 62 MLAs can find no other person in the 62 except Mr. Kejriwal? The other obvious argument is that Mr. Kejriwal, who is in jail, who has very limited access to files, has very limited access to newspapers and media, knows what is happening in the departments of Atishi and Saurabh, and he is departmentless minister, he is departmentless person who has not signed any document till date, he knows what is happening outside in these departments and is giving Adesh what to do. But Saurabh and Atishi are incompetent to the extent that they don't know what is happening while being outside. So they must be sacked immediately on the obvious front. And now let me come to the legal argument, Rajdeep. And this is the most important. Rajdeep, I, before coming to your show, as you know, I gather all my facts. There is an RTI manual which has been put out from many years of Delhi government's functioning. That RTI manual describes how the Delhi government, from chief minister to minister, how it operates. Let me quote one line to you. The receipt and dispatch of files and letters will take place through letter monitoring system. This is anybody can go and Google it. I'm not lying. Secondly, Delhi government works under Transaction of Business Rules, GNTCD, 1993. Section 15 and other sections read together say as follows, that everything that takes place between two ministries or ministry and chief minister happens through written standing orders with copies to be maintained by that ministry. Please keep these two points in mind. And third point in mind, which is the quotation of PDT Achari, somebody you swear by Mr. Rajiv Sardesai, on 26th of March in the Hindustan Times. He says, and I agree with him legally, while the chief minister has the freedom to continue as chief minister, I quote unquote, he, he has to do everything with the permission of the court, which means receiving files or signing files or giving any instructions. Now, please keep these things in mind and give me the answers to the following question. Question number one, when Atishi came on first day and issued this chief minister's office note, I as the BJP want to know that when did Mr. Kejriwal sign a written order as required by the law, RTI Act, which I've told you, and the Tobro Act, when did he sign it and who, which officer did he give it to in the CMO, who in turn issued this note, name of that officer, time of the issuance of this note. Secondly, why does this note of the CMO not have a date, not have the required reference number, which is a must in government documentation and the sign of the chief minister. Now today Saurabh has said and quote unquote, it was played on your Ajtak and India today. He said, I have been instructed by chief minister to do whatever in the health department. Mm -hmm. How was this instruction given? Was it A in writing or was it verbal? If it was verbal, when did Saurabh Bharadwaj meet the Honorable Chief Minister inside the custody? Because as far as I know, he has not gone and personally met him. So was it communicated verbally through Chief Minister's wife, Honorable Sunita Ji, or through the lawyer? 
which is a violation because you cannot communicate through these Mr. outside Mr. persons. Wala, it is you uh, made absolutely a very... not contemplated in the constitution. Finally, finally, just yes. 10 seconds more, 10 seconds more, 10 seconds more and I'll complete. Therefore, the question that the BJP is asking, I am happy to answer even the Sharad Reddy part of it in the end if you give me the time. We'll come to that. But the most important question is that today I am a resident of Delhi. We are, yeah, we'll come to that in detail. I am a resident of Delhi. You are a resident of Delhi. Should you not know whether the CMO is working as per the rules and constitution or is some person like Sunita ji, she's not constitutional post holder, giving the instructions to CMO that issue this note, issue that note? Is it the lawyer of Mr. Kejriwal saying issue this note, issue that note? Which non-constitutional entity is doing this? Which non-bureaucratic statutory Your entity is doing this? time is up. I, I listen to you very to carefully. This. Specific answer I've listened, should be given. Okay, Mr. Mr. Punawala, as you can see, I did not interrupt you because I think you showed me the courtesy also of answering the specific question without any personal jibes and I really appreciate that. This is the way to conduct a debate. I want therefore you Jasmine Same Shah, very specific, very specific uh, charges have been made by Shahzad Punawala and I think any citizen will ask that. How is the chief minister issuing letters and orders to his ministers who are not in communication with him? Whether it is Saurabh Bhardwaj or Atishi, according to Shahzad Punawala, he wants to know how are these orders being issued and he alludes to the fact he claims virtually that the chief minister's wife is the one who may be issuing these orders. That's his claim. But the charge is that specific orders are being issued from custody without even the ministers meeting the chief minister. So are these forged? Is this all drama? Your response. Rajdeep, uh, first and foremost, Mr. Rajan Kejriwal is under a constitutional oath to serve the people of Delhi unless and until he leaves office. We are seeing today scenes in the national capital which are unprecedented in Indian history. That a sitting chief minister in a completely fake case which has been going on for two years, the investigation for which is going on for two years, no evidence, no money recovery, no money trail to Aam Aadmi Party. Now we find 60 crores of money trail to BJP. But what happens? It is a sitting chief minister who gets arrested. Now, is he barred by the constitution from functioning as a chief minister? Absolutely not. Which means he is obligated by the constitution to no, serve no, the constituents of question. Delhi, the people no, of no, Delhi. No, no, Mr. Jasmine Shah, he is not legally barred, but I am asking you specifically to the charge that Shahzad Punawala is making that all these orders are fictitious, that there was no connection that Atishi or Saurabh Bhardwaj had with the chief minister. These orders are all being created, manufactured. So this is precisely what Shahzad is expected to say. You know, he's a BJP spokesperson. I can say that these are genuine orders. The, the chief minister is concerned about the people of Delhi and he's doing the job which he's elected to do. Now, is the chief so minister how, how obligated to the say orders how from he ED passes custody, communication sir? to his minister? No. No, that no, is no, no I'm asking you. How, how is communication no, so being that, passed that, by someone uh, in ED custody? Will, I, will, I will only say this, Rajdeep. Rajdeep, I will only say this that he is not obligated to reveal how he is communicating to his uh, ministers uh, on uh, you know broad domain if the courts were to ask him we will certainly say that he is doing his job there are no uh, uh, huge decisions being taken what are the questions he is asked he has he has heard that medicines are not there in some of the hospitals so in case of say guna ho jata hai Ki, the sitting chief minister of Delhi, why is he not quitting? Which means their entire ploy, Rajdeep, was mm -hmm. arrest Mr. Kejriwal because you cannot uh, defeat him electorally. You know in the Lok Sabha election, uh, the huge momentum is in the favor of India Alliance. And therefore, what do you do? You, you arrest him in the middle of the night. No money trail, no evidence, nothing. But now you start demanding Kinko resign Karwao. So this okay. shows that the entire ploy from the beginning was to politically attack Mr. Kejriwal. And now I will state the most obvious question because uh, he has taken a lot of time to ask some questions. I think the most important question in the people of the minds of not just the people of Delhi but the entire country are twofold, Rajdeep. Under what law, under what precedence has the Prime Minister of India imprisoned a sitting Chief Minister in a case where there is no evidence, no money trail, two years of investigation, 500 of uh, raids? Second, you know, for a, on a matter where uh, you have not found any money trail leading to up, but suddenly this Sarat Chandra Reddy's uh, uh, electoral bond data, which has just come in the public domain three days back, he was called the kingpin by the elect, uh, enforcement directorate in the same scam. He gets arrested by ED and then he gives 55 crores to BJP after the arrest. Now, the money trail in this case is linking to the BJP. 
So why is it that ED is not showing up on the doorsteps of BJP? This precisely okay. proves our point that what you are seeing today is blatant injustice. It's not just Mr. Kejriwal. Mr. Sisodia, remember, is in jail for a year without trial. These are political prisoners. And not just India, the entire world is taking notice of how democracy Jasmine, is being decimated in front of our I'm going to give you a little eyes. less time. I'm going to give you a little less time than I gave Shahzad only because I earlier gave Saurabh Bhardwaj. So I want to be fair with everyone. Sanjay Hegde, you're listening to both these sides. No I want to understand first clarity on the legal position. The clarity I want on the legal, is it very clear that Mr. Kejriwal can run this government from jail? Because it has never happened in the history of the country. As I said, Sukram was a minister, a chief minister. Can he run the government and can, importantly, the LG now intervene and say, this is not a tenable arrangement, I am taking over? We are in uncharted territory. But we have had precedents before where chief ministers were incapacitated, medically incapacitated. You had uh, both M.J. Ramachandran and Jailalitha running uh, the uh, administration from their hospital beds when they, when they were uh, barely sentient. The system takes care of a lot of things. And it is not as if uh, in, uh, somebody in prison is totally deprived of his usual business. Uh, in the Sahara case, the Sahara Shri ran a business uh, from jail, where he was allowed to liquidate assets. No, but are we comparing uh, a corporate to a no, are we comparing a corporate to a chief minister of a state, Mr. Hegde? Well, well let me put it this way: uh, uh, Justice Krishna Iyer once said that the fundamental rights do not part company at the prison gates, because okay. a man is in jail, and if there are certain functions which can be can be done or uh, need his attention. It's always open to the courts to permit it or even the prison authorities. Uh, just, just for your information, there was a former prime minister, Narsabha Rao. When he had to go into prison, a specific area was a government guest house was designated as a prison. So prison manuals do not make the constitution. Right. Yes, but Narsimha Rao did and, not run and, his government. But, but with the, no, no, you know, let me clear. Narsimha Rao did, did not run his government I, I from that. their mistake. I'm just giving you an example. I'm just giving okay. you an example. The, I, the, first thing, the, the first thing is that what we have to look for is the constitution. The constitution does not have a disqualification. Okay. If a disqualification I, has to come in, it has to come in through parliament, in my view, simply because otherwise... The precedent would be that any investigating officer who decides he wants to arrest a sitting chief minister or maybe one day the prime minister will then be able to run roughshod over elected officials. We okay, are I not think... a police state yet. We are not... Okay, we are not a police state yet and your emphasis I know is on the word yet but Shazad Punawala, you're hearing what is being said particularly about the manner in which AAP is claiming this has been fixed. They're using electoral bonds. The fact that Sarat Reddy, who turned approver, his company gave a large amounts of money to the BJP is being used. This is all a fixed match. And as Sanjay Agne is pointing out, tomorrow, therefore, with the enforcement directorate having the powers that they have, they can arrest any chief minister of the opposition and bring the constitutional system to a halt. That is the fear the opposition has. Your response. Uh, I heard Sanjay and I heard Jasmine very patiently without a single interruption. And since you've asked me the Sharad Reddy question again, I want to address that in 30 seconds, but also make the remaining counters. So I hope you'll give me adequate time for both of these things. But I want to, unlike Two Jasmine, minutes. not prevaricate on your question, answer that first. Sh yes. Sharad Reddy is not the only basis on which this case rests. If you see the remand which was demanded by ED, on which remand was granted, ED has said that the basis of this is not just statement of Sharad Reddy but documentary evidence and in fact statements of the vendors that the people of Aam Aadmi Party hired in Goa to whom the money went. Apart from that, Sharad Reddy has not been made approver by Narendra Modi. He has been allowed to become approver by the courts unless the Chanda was going to the court. Also, Rajdeep, the first time that Aurobindo and Aurobindo and Sharad are two different entities. Narayan Murthy Infosys, two different entities. Azim Premji Vipro, two different entities. Arunpuri India Today, two different entities. 
रिटरेटिंग टू यू that this is a hogwash this has been argued before the court lower court tomorrow they will get an opportunity to argue it before high court they can make this argument and get the relief if this is the basis of the case is so flimsy but the fact of the matter is here is the aam aadmi party which says no money trail has been found but the supreme court has spoken of money trail the high court has spoken of money trail the last court which has granted remand has spoken of money trail yet they get away by peddling a half lie they say that we will leave this matter to the court that matter to the court but then the court is not denying is denying them relief and even somebody like sanjay nirupam says that mr kejriwal should resign they are still calling it vendetta politics now let me come to the larger points which i needed to address and please give me 20 or 30 seconds for that rajdeep mr jasmin shah said and i quote unquote this is a genuine order if it is a genuine order i request through the medium of india today that the first order put out by aam aadmi party government why it has no date why it has no sign why it has no reference number please tell me who was the signing authority which court order was taken by mr kejriwal to sign and give it and to which officer of chief minister's office was it given secondly jasmin shah says i am not obligated to tell you how mr kejriwal is issuing these orders rajdeep can you hear this and believe this this is a party which predicated itself on right to information and transparency says that how orders are being issued whether it's under the obro act and whether it's under the designated hearing. manner they you, will you not tell us thirdly point. thirdly just no, no, last no, 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 point no, 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 just third point yes very third quickly, point yes Third point. Respond, third point. Respond, Third point. Rajdeep, I'll finish in 10 seconds. Rajdeep, yeah, yeah. 10 seconds. Rajdeep, no, no, 10 seconds. Wait, wait, I will finish. Jasmine, please, please Rajdeep. Yeah, Rajdeep. Let him finish. Yes, no, Jasmine, point. please let him finish. Yes, Rajdeep, finish. Rajdeep, 10 seconds. Rajdeep, third thing that Mr. Jasmine said very arrogantly, and I'm surprised at the arrogance, is that he said that we will go tell the courts if the courts ask us. Rajdeep, your good friend and somebody we respect, PDT Achari. Court and court in Hindustan Times has said that if Mr. Kejriwal has to even issue one signature order, he has to take permission of the court. It is not that I will do whatever I want and then go to court. It is first you get the permission from court. Okay, even the thing you that made Mr. that point, but I want I, if Narsimha Rao got whatever area he got, he got it through court. I, I, you made that point, but Jasmin Shah, you must answer this as we conclude the Please debate. Tell me Where the are details. these orders coming from? The specific details. Do you believe that un? unsigned letters is the way to run a government can a chief minister run a government continually like this sooner or later it will catch up rajdeep i i'll correct myself because uh, uh, you know shahzad has a habit of twisting everything what i said is that the chief minister of delhi is not obligated to say how does he communicate with his ministers obviously whatever action he is doing he is doing under sound legal advice and and we will leave it at that the more important question today is the you know rather than these inane questions ki kahan se sign kiya kahan se likha the bigger question today is the threat in front of democracy in india people and since ever since mr kejriwal has been arrested people who are hardcore bjp supporters are reaching out to us and saying that this is unprecedented you know yes we gave mr modi the mandate to run the country but going and putting all opposition leaders under jail and in okay, cases you, where trial doesn't even begin and for you're, years you are seeing people like mr okay, sodia under jail that you will have to answer people, people. and oh, that there is anger you're claiming there is sympathy but there eventually you will have to answer to the court or indeed the people of of, of the how is the state going to be run if the chief minister is in custody it's that administrative issue the practical issues that are important i'm afraid i've run out of time sanjay today we'll have many more such days i'm sure this is not going to end here you are with the news today to our news maker tonight he's just ended a 21 day fast in the freezing temperatures of ladakh sonam wangchuk the climate activist has captured the imagination of the nation with that fast demanding that ladakh be brought under the shik schedule of the constitution that would give it tribal autonomy 
due under the constitution for a tribal dominated area. But his fast has ended. The government has not still responded to his demands of wanting the ecological security of Ladakh as well as the statehood demands of the region. Why did Sonam Wangchuk undertake this fast? We'd spoken to him when he started it. Now we are speaking to him when he's ending it. I spoke to Sonam Wangchuk, in fact, earlier today. Sonam, you have ended this fast today. 21 days fasting in those freezing temperatures at that height is quite a feat. What kept you going for 21 days, Sonam, tell us. Thank you, Rajdeep, for having me here. First of all, that was the point. We wanted to show that we'll endure pain, inflict pain on ourselves and not anybody else mm -hmm. to make our voice reach the right places. Well, what kept me going was the enthusiasm and the support of people. You know, every night, roughly 300, 200 to 350 people have been sleeping along with me under the open skies when Temperature last night was minus 10. Few days ago, it was minus 16. So, uh, and, and during the days, it has been for anything from 2,000 people to today, 6,000 people who have gathered here to observe one day fast, some three days, some seven days, some 10 days, and one of a retired soldier has kept all the 21 days. So that's the enthusiasm, rather pain in the hearts of the people at uh, what uh, fate they have been met at. But, but may I ask you, your fast hasn't really achieved any kind of major breakthrough. This fast was supposed to not just raise ecological concerns of Ladakh, but you were reportedly trying to push the center to bring Ladakh within the sixth schedule of the constitution that would guarantee its special rights for tribal areas. You even wanted statehood. None of those issues have even been discussed or raised by the center. Virtually no response. So what have you achieved? We are not really worried about that because we have achieved a lot. The entire nation is moved. There are gatherings and fasts all over the nation. Last Sunday in some 50 cities and uh, towns, there were uh, events, Friends of Ladakh events. Media is discussing, except for mainstream media, and with some exceptions like yours, they are discussing about the fragility of the Himalayas and futility of all that is labeled as development, which ends up in disasters that the locals bear the consequences and taxpayers pay the repairs. So mm -hmm. all this has been highlighted is already an achievement. Secondly, things are not achieved just like that. We in Ladakh break stones, rocks to build houses. And we know that a stone that breaks at the hundred hit looks like the first, first hit when it is 99th hit. It's only on the hundred that it suddenly breaks. So we'll continue this. We don't know when the final hit that breaks the, I won't say breaks the stone here, I would say melts the heart, the stone hearts of mm -hmm. our leaders. If India is truly a democracy, then it's, a, it's an honor and a dignified thing for these hearts to melt. Because mm -hmm. during these fasts, in the last one month or so, roughly 60,000 people have gathered here to express their anguish. That's like one third or one third of the entire population of Ladakh voting with their feet. If this doesn't but, move, what does in a democracy? You know, you're, you're mentioning democracy, but many will say, Sonam Wangchuk, democracy is about election. There's an election to the Lok Sabha in a few weeks from now. That could be the occasion for you to raise your voice. That's where you could raise the consciousness and maybe actually join the political battle. Have you ever considered that, that you could join, push your agenda, join politics or support candidates in the elections to Ladakh that are coming up? 
we have way past those milestones. I mean, if you are talking about elections in Ladakh, then mm -hmm. if things don't change, then the ruling party will not even save its deposits, okay, in the elections, if mm -hmm. things don't change. Of course, if things change and they heed to people's uh, wishes and their own promises, then again, things could change. But we are way past that. We are actually appealing to the nation so that the nation makes a dent or a change on elections elsewhere with the Ladakh issue. So mm -hmm. in Ladakh, that's been almost decided unless they change things. But now it is to move the nation to express their voice and uh, call the government to choose between keeping their promises and prove that their guarantees work or prove everything is just farce. It's all, uh, they call it Joomla. Uh, that's what the message will be if they leave us like this. You know, you, you, you just use but the yes, word Joomla. I have no uh, plans of myself, myself joining any of these. Okay, no plans. You're, you have no plans of joining politics, but you, you just use the word Joomla and it seems you are targeting the center and the Modi government. This is leading to many supporters of the government saying your entire agitation is politically driven, that Sonam Wangchuk is acting as a Chinese agent. You were a hero only the other day. Now you are a Chinese agent. Are you ready to take that criticism? No, we are not at all against the central government. We would just appeal to the central government to not be against Ladakh. We are, all we are asking is keep your promises. What's wrong with that? If you can't even ask somebody to keep your promise or hold accountable, then you better be in China, born in China, not in a democratic country like India. So we can't be. You know, there's a nice uh, couplet in Urdu. Hum ah bhi karte hai to... <laughs> Uh, something like that. Uh, so we are just crying under the pain of a broken promise, and that cannot be presented as anti national or anything. Actually, but we are saying protect the nation. We are losing land. We are losing. But can I ask you the specific promise? What is this specific promise that you believe the center has, uh, has not kept? I'll show you. I'll show you. This is the specific promise. This was the promise made in 2019 with mm -hmm. Ladakh. Yeah? In 2019 parliamentary election and 2020 uh, Hill Council election, they promised that Ladakh will be safeguarded under the sixth schedule of the Indian constitution. And it was the top agenda. And uh, months after that, they went silent. Years after that, they started not liking us, reminding them. After dilly-dallying of four years, now five, mm -hmm. uh, March 4th, they clearly declined, refused, when we were close to the uh, model code of conduct. So it was kind of leading us to this model code of conduct and washing their hands with their promise. So we're just can seeking I, that. Is that anti-national? You can just tell. Like, can I ask you, are you saying that is not anti-national, but may I ask you this, what next? Your fast has now ended today. How do you carry forward this agitation? How do you break the ice, if I may use that word in conclusion? Well, we have always been trying to break the ice for four and a half years with folded hands. If you see my videos, it was always with folded hands telling them my or Ladakh's monkey bath. And uh, even now, we are hoping that there is no darkness at the end of the tunnel. Even now, we are hoping that they'll give us an assurance and all will be well and everybody will be happy. Um, and they'll win a seat from here if they keep their promise. Um, what next? People are very, very enthusiastic.
I was about to extend my fast, but they said we'll continue it. So it will be a relay fast that goes on for a long time. From tomorrow, women's groups are holding fasts, you know, 10 days fast. After that, youth groups. After that, uh, monks from monasteries. After that, elderly people. And then I might sit again. So it will go on till the 99th hit and the 100th. Let me leave it there. You're clearly someone who's a man on a mission. You are in many ways inspirational to many who believe that this kind of Gandhian nonviolent protest is the way forward to have your voices heard. I do hope, though, that there will be a dialogue and all issues can be resolved amicably for now. Sonam Vangchuk, who joined me a short while ago, a very special guest, a newsmaker of the day. And that's what we try and do on the news today. We try and travel to every corner of the country, trying to overcome what I call the tyranny of distance. For now, thanks for watching. You stay well, stay safe. Good night, Shubhratri. Jai Hind, Namaskar.